Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. The first bookmobile appeared in Victorian England in the 1850s, a horse-drawn mobile library delivering books to the lonely villages spread over rural Great Britain. The idea was a good one. And over the next 150 years, bookmobiles became more and more common. These mobile libraries were called many things, such as book wagons, pack horse librarians, before they finally and permanently became known as bookmobiles. The purpose of bookmobiles has always been the same, provide library service to areas that don't have a traditional library. Whether it was 1850s England or 1960s America, Bookmobiles were created to give more people access to more books. It took a while for bookmobiles to catch on. For instance, there were only 60 bookmobiles nationwide during the 1930s, but the Library Services Act of 1956 sparked a boom in bookmobile service. By the 1960s, more than 30 million rural Americans were served by bookmobiles. However, as more permanent libraries were built in the 1970s and 80s, the need for bookmobile service in states like West Virginia diminished. In the 21st century, bookmobiles are considered by some to be outmoded because of high costs, advanced technology, ineffectiveness. But if our experience in this state is any guideline, bookmobiles are anything but outmoded. Seven West Virginia libraries are still served by bookmobiles. And because of the very rural nature of the state, bookmobiles in this neck of the woods are still going strong. Let's pay a visit to one county library where bookmobile service continues to be a very important part of what librarians do every day. The Raleigh County Public Library. <music> We're here at Shady Spring Elementary School, one of the stops for the Raleigh County Public Library's Bookmobile Service. And with me now is the Head of Operations for the Bookmobile Program, Amy Smith. Amy, thanks for uh, dropping by and letting us spend some time with you. Uh, that's not a problem at all. We're glad to do it. Okay. First, give us a little background on the Bookmobile Service. When did things start? Well, as it's been told to me, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, uh, there became a pursuit of cultural and intellectual enhancement both in Great Britain and in the United States. Uh, I think the, from what I've been told, the first bookmobile hit the streets in about 1904. Those started in both Virginia, South Carolina, as well as Maryland. Um, in this area, they began talks about it in 1924, and by the year 1936, we had our first bookmobile, which was actually shared between Raleigh County and Fayette County, and we've been running ever since. So this is our, I'm proud to say, 80th anniversary with the Raleigh County Bookmobile. That's great. Now, right now we're standing behind, in front of actually, your, your biggest bookmobile, but you actually have what, two units? Yes, sir, we do. One was purchased in 2010, and that would be this, our bigger bookmobile. And we purchased uh, the smaller bookmobile in 2013 with the help of the USDA and uh, several other grants and donations. Well, this is a good looking bookmobile. Let's go Thank take you. a look inside. Sure. So, Amy, now we're inside a good size bookmobile and I'm looking around at, at your collection here. How does that work? Does the bookmobile have its own collection of, of books or does it share it with the main library? Sometimes we borrow some of the books from the main library, but we actually have our own budget and our own collection development. Um, we, we keep our collection in an office that's outside of the Bookma Bays where we store both of the buses uh, and we normally try to refresh the collection on both buses pretty frequently to make sure that the books that we have are new, uh, that are not damaged, um, that are trending and things like that. We try to keep it updated. How big is the collection? Um, actually, our collection is a little bit over about 22,000. Um, this bus will hold about 25,000 items, and our smaller bus usually holds anywhere from 15 to about 1,700 items. So if 2,500 in, in this bookmobile, 
fifteen to seventeen hundred in the other. So mm -hmm. obviously, you, you really do have to spend a lot of time and moving books back and forth. Yes, we, we spend an, an awful lot of time. Usually at the end of the day, um, any areas on the bus, any shelves that might have um, been quite gone through, we always try to make sure that we replenish those at the end of the day. Uh, we generally order books out of our budget once to, to twice a month and we try to make sure that those new books are put onto the buses and available as quickly as possible. How big a challenge is it to manage the inventory uh, in a bookmobile. I noticed while we were uh, uh, a little earlier watching the, the kids coming in and out yes. and the, here at Shady Spring you have a, a lot of classes coming in, kids coming in picking out books. Mm -hmm. I, is it a tough task to manage the inventory? Um, it can be. We, we're usually pretty busy. We're normally on the road um, all but about two days out of each month. We use those days as administrative days and that's usually when we try to get uh, the largest amount of work done that we can as far as um, checking the books on the bus to make sure that none are in need of repair, uh, things of that nature. So it, we have a very limited amount of time to, to do a whole lot of work with our collection. So how often do you make a stop like here at Shady Spring, once a week? Um, actually, five days a week we're at five the schools. Both buses are normally running five days a week with the exception of two days that we use as administrative and bus repair. Okay, then describe the process for me. So uh, a youngster comes in, picks mm -hmm. out a book. Uh, how do you, what's the process to get the book back returned once, once uh, students done with it? Um, normally the teachers are pretty good about uh, letting the children know a couple of days in advance when the bookmobile will be back. Um, so when they come on the bus we use our own Wi-Fi system um, through a hotspot that's made available that we run both computer systems off of. When the children come on they'll bring their old book back, give it to um, the driver, he checks that in. We help them find a new book and we check it out for them here. Um, the teachers are given slips of paper on every visit that makes them aware of the next date of our return. And as I said, they're, they're very good about letting the students know a couple of days in advance when their books will be needed um, to be returned. So how do you determine the schedule? How do you develop it? What, what kind of stops besides Shady Spring do you go to? Well, on the bigger bus, because we do have a larger collection, we try to put most of the bigger schools, um, normally if they have th anywhere from three to five or six hundred students, we normally take this bus. Um, we do schools, like I said, once every um, month. Each school is done once every month and we do probably five schools, four to five schools a week on this bus. The smaller bus we usually send uh, to the smaller schools as well as retirement communities and um, preschools. In terms of checking out a book, is it any different checking one out from the bookmobile as it would be from the, the main library? Um, it is a little bit different because it's dependent on us being able to get to the child to pick that book up. Um, some children do take their books back to the library if they're regular library patrons, but because they are, many of them are dependent on us being able to pick that book up for them, we normally give them about six weeks as opposed to the two weeks, which is the normal checkout time. Tell me about the challenge of keeping the bookmobile on the road. Uh, different from other libraries in the fact that you are actually traveling down the highway. Right. Um, we are a mobile library unit, so we have a lot of issues that they don't have in the stationary libraries. We try to do most of our maintenance ourselves, that uh, basic maintenance such as oil changes and um, any type of battery repair, things like that. We have some electrical issues that we can handle on our own, but sometimes we run into cases, um, issues that we're not able to deal with ourselves, and so we do on occasion have to put one or two buses into the shop. Um, we'll normally try to balance our schedule as best that we can so that if we have one bus that's not able to go out, we'll try to send the other. What's the reaction uh, from your patrons to the bookmobile? I know just as an outsider watching the kids come into to the bookmobile, the level of excitement was pretty high. 
Oh, absolutely. Um, the children are always glad to see us when we come. They're very excited about reading. Most of them know exactly what they want before they get on the bus. Um, sometimes they'll come on and just ask us if we have anything new that they haven't seen yet. They're always very excited about trying new things. So we try to bring what's trending, uh, what's popular with the kids. Um, if we know a certain school is doing um, a certain program, an educational program, maybe perhaps about science, we try to, to provide fun books that also teach science. So they're very excited to see us come. What is your goal for this program? Um, my goal for this program would be just to reach out to as many children in Raleigh County as early as possible. We know by studies that children who start reading and appreciating literature at a younger age do well in school and it also reflects in, in their future success. So we want to make sure that we're a part of that. What's your favorite part of the job? Um, my favorite part of the job? Well, we there are several actually. There's, there are several. I always like to see a child's eyes light up when we find the perfect book for them. Um, we get that a lot. And in the summertime, I think that's really where the bookmobiles shine is when we're able to uh, contact the children who may not have access uh, to transportation, so it's a little bit harder for them to get to the library. So for us, that's exciting to be able to um, provide them crafts and good literature, even DVDs, movies, we really enjoy doing that. And we also have some um, people in the reti retirement communities that are not able to access the library, so they're very excited to see us come and, and that makes us feel um, that we're doing a, a good civic duty. Amy, this is a great program and thanks for spending Thank time you. with us today. Oh, no problem at all. I appreciate it. Come back anytime. we Will do so. When we return, we'll talk with Chuck Jones who drives the bookmobile for the Craft Memorial Library in Princeton. Stick with us, we'll be right back. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. We're here in Mercer County, West Virginia, where we're in a bookmobile provided by the Craft Memorial Library. And with me now is Chuck Jones. And Chuck has been driving these roads for many years in a bookmobile. Chuck, thanks for being with us. It's nice to be here today. Well, how did you get started driving a bookmobile? Uh, well, uh, I, I'd applied for a job at the library um, to work at the front desk. And I, little did I know their bookmobile driver was uh, getting ready to take another job and leave. The first job was a part-time job, and this was a full-time job, which I was looking for. <laughs> and the first question they asked me, they said, uh, you know, are you going to stay here a while? And I said, well, I'm trying to get my foot in the door, and if I can get a full-time job, I'll take it. And that's when they... The rest is, it. Yeah, the, the rest is right. history. <laughs> well, describe for me a typical day for you. A typical day, uh, well... I usually get to work about 8.30, um, load up the truck. I, I'd like to get it loaded the night before and have everything ready to go when I get there and uh, get, the, get it warmed up um, and head out on the road to my first stop. <laughs> Check the oil sometimes <laughs> when I need to. And I go to um, schools, nursing homes, daycares, um, head starts, community stops all over the county. So how do you determine your schedule? So is it determined for you? Do you pick it out ahead of time yourself? Uh, I, I usually make the schedule up. I, it's, I have like a spring schedule, fall schedule, and a summer schedule. The spring and fall schedules are usually about the same. Uh, when school's in, uh, we try to help them out as much as we can and go to as many schools as we possibly can. Summertime, no schools. Uh, I'm not on the road uh, quite as many days a week then. I, I have two end days instead of one end day in the summer. 
and uh, a lot more community stops. Yeah, your schedule seems pretty diverse, not just schools, but a number of other uh, No, I, I go to a lot of different places, uh, nursing homes and uh, daycares and things. I stop at the hospital and take books in there. So, so when you're trying to put your collection together, you have a lot of books in here. Yeah. But since it's not just based on schools, you have older readers as well as younger I readers. Have, right. I have large print books. How do you how do you determine your collection in the library for a given week? Uh, well, that's the fun part. Uh, I, I take a lot of requests to uh, different mm -hmm. people, and I'll, I'll take I'll pick things out of the library and take along. But on the truck. I just like to have a variety of, uh, you know, a little, try to get a little bit of everything. Um, people have diverse tastes and <laughs> what they like to read. Now your collection is, as we look around, uh, around in here, your collection is part of the Craft Memorial Public Library's collection as well. You don't have That's an right. independent art. I, I can pick anything out of there. Right. So, it, so how does that process work? When you 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 want to get some books out of the library and put them in here, you, how do you go about that? Well, I have a different code uh, for the computer system. Uh, it's a little different from the main library code. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any fines on the bookmobile books due to you know my schedule and it's two week schedule and you know. You never know what the weather's going to be like or uh, if you have mechanical problems and can't get someplace. So we don't have fines on the bookmobile books, and it reflects uh, on a computer with, with my mm -hmm. codes. One of the things I know that you do is uh, you do a lot of reading uh, um, to your stops. I do. Uh, it sounds like part of the fun of the job. It's, it can be interesting, yeah. <laughs> I, I go from reading Pete the Cat and Curious George to... Uh, Tom Sawyer at the nursing homes. Or, um, I think uh, I'm reading um, A Season of Gifts by Richard Peck right now at most of the most of my nursing home stops. But. That sounds like pretty. Of course, then you have to determine which books to choose, or do you take requests? You mentioned do you take some requests. Yeah, I'll, I'll take requests too. A uh, little kid this morning said, "Bring the monkey books next time," so <laughs> it'll be George. <laughs> One of the aspects of a mobile library that a typical librarian doesn't have to worry about is getting on down the road. And you have been getting on down the road for what, 11 years? 11 right? years, that's right. So what is the biggest challenge for you in terms of maintenance and repair? Uh, the, you have to keep your generator working. <laughs> if you don't have a generator, we don't have the lights, uh, no computer. And, uh, you know, the truck itself, um, it's a diesel motor, and not everybody works on diesels. Right. We have a good guy, uh, DNR, that takes care of the truck for us. I assume you have had some days where the bookmobile didn't get on down the road, or as you were getting on down the road, something happened. It's Can you give me quite a, a an few example? times? Yeah. yeah. Give me an example. <laughs> well, just last winter, my uh, the water pump froze up and uh, went out on it while I was on the interstate. Uh, <laughs> no steering, no brakes. Luckily, I was coming uphill into town, so I was able to make it to uh, a place where I could get some help. But stuff like that happens. <laughs> you get a flat tire, you get a flat tire. When the when the the bookmobile is down. How does that affect your schedule? I mean, how do you handle that? Uh, well, I usually will just uh, renew all my books for the day, you know, to the next time. I call everybody, of course, and let them know that I'm not going to be there that day. And uh, occasionally I'll, have, I'll take my own personal vehicle and take the books around to certain stops and things. In terms of checking out books uh, for your patrons, uh, what do you use? How is it? Is it tied into the, the main library? It's the Sierra system. Yeah. Okay. Is that so an internet-based system? It is. Uh, if I check something out out on the road, they know at the library. I mean, it's it's in the, at the at the same time. I check it out here. They know there. What about connectivity issues? Uh, well, this year the connectivity has been great. They've switched. Uh, I'm not sure what Eva has done, the, the boss there, but uh, Eva I've, McGuire. I, Eva McGuire. I, I've got connectivity at every place I go now, which before it, it hasn't always been like that. <laughs> you know, we're in yeah. the country and you have dead spots with uh, uh, 
with your cell service and things, but so far, knock on wood, it's yeah. been good this year. <laughs> as as the the bookmobile librarian, I guess, what is your goal? What do you try to accomplish when you set out every day? Well, I, I want to take as many books to as many people as I can across the county every day. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun and you end up meeting a ton of great people. And uh, somewhere along the line, I'm sure there's a little kid that's gonna grow up and like to read. <laughs> you know, I hope. What's your favorite part of the job? The, the, the traveling around, uh, and I, I, I enjoy going into the nursing homes. I mean, you, you make such a positive difference in people's lives, and they, they always look forward to seeing you come. <laughs> it sounds it means a lot to me. Well, it sounds like it's a very rewarding way to make a living. Oh, it's the best. This is the best job ever. I'm, I'm, uh, every morning when I get up, I'm excited to go to work. I'm always happy to be here. <laughs> Chuck, thanks for spending some time with us, and uh, uh, good travels. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Libraries Today. I'd like to thank the head of Bookmobile Operations for the Raleigh County Public Library, Amy Smith, and Chuck Jones of the Craft Memorial Library for giving us a glimpse of bookmobiles in West Virginia. Bookmobiles have a long and varied history in the state. Because of the rural nature of West Virginia, bookmobiles became an integral part of the original mission of the West Virginia Library Commission. With me now to talk more about bookmobiles and the WVLC, is WVLC Executive Secretary Karen Goff. Karen, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about bookmobiles. Uh, the State Library Commission came into existence 1929 and very, very uh, early on in its history became involved in bookmobiles. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that. That's one of the very first uh, projects or activities of the Library Commission, which was at that time based in Morgantown. So the, I don't know if there was federal money available then or not. This was 1941 because although the Library Commission was established in 1929, a stellar year for things to be established, <laughs> um, it wasn't funded until 1941. The Depression, I'm so, sure, had something exactly, to do with that. Exactly, exactly. But the, the mission of the Library Commission has always been to extend library services across the state. So bookmobiles was the logical way to do it. And these were called demonstration bookmobiles. And they were small, sort of like bread truck-like vehicles. And uh, they would, I think the commission like com uh, contracted with a county and the commission would run the bookmobiles for maybe two or three years and then the county would take over the bookmobile operation and the Library Commission would move on to another county or group of counties. I guess things really took off. It was the, uh, uh, the 1956 Library Services Act, uh, which really kind of changed things in terms of putting more libraries out there, including bookmobiles, and it seemed to really take off at that point. Mm -hmm. Each of the federal acts, the Library Services Acts, there were library services and construction came, followed library services itself the one that, that you mentioned, and then Library Services and Technology Act. Again, using different formats, different vehicles, as you will, to get the materials to people. And uh, those early ones were concentrated on bookmobiles because especially in West Virginia, there were very few brick and mortar libraries that were already in place. There were some women's club libraries, and the women's clubs were very instrumental in actually getting the library commission established. 
and then supporting it along. So their vision paralleled our vision to have library service in all areas of the state. And I guess it peaked in terms of bookmobiles, peaked in the late 50s, early 60s. And then in the late 60s, the real boom became, uh, came around of building traditional libraries in the state. I believe over 80 libraries were built from the late 60s to the early 80s. Right. I would think with all these new libraries being built, traditional libraries being built, that affected the number of bookmobiles than in the state. That's true because, again, the bookmobiles would only arrive every two weeks, once a month, depending on the, their range and everything like that. So the ultimate thing was to have a building in the community that was open all the time. But I, I still feel that libraries benefit a lot from bookmobiles, the ones that still have them. I believe seven counties still have bookmobiles in the state. Uh, one of the interesting statistics I saw that uh, although bookmobiles started dropping off in the 90s and into the 2000s, since 2005, the number of bookmobiles nationwide are up 10%. So we've actually seen a change in that. Do you see that trend continuing? Do you see in West Virginia more bookmobiles uh, hitting the roads? I would like to see more bookmobiles hitting the roads. Of course, there's are the, the funding problems. Bookmobiles of the size that you, you saw in Raleigh and that are not inexpensive vehicles to... Right. Um, to both purchase and then to operate and maintain. I think the bookmobiles often go to senior centers too to provide that service to people who are not extremely mobile. Still a place here in the 21st century for bookmobiles. Absolutely. Karen, thanks for being with us. Thanks again for inviting me, We Sam. appreciate it. Bookmobiles have come a long way since the days of mule-drawn wagons down the old mud roads of 19th century America. Today, they are air-conditioned, state-of-the-art libraries on wheels that drive country roads to this day. They bring library service to parts of West Virginia that would otherwise not be served. And for rural parts of the state, continue to be an essential part of library service. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. Hi, I'm Laura Morano from Austin and Alley. And I'm Caroline Kennedy. When you read something you really love, you want to tell your friends about it. Libraries are a great place to share the books and poems that mean something to you. And that's not all you can do at the library. You can get help with your homework, use a computer, see friends, learn new skills, and find out what's going on in the world. Libraries give us a place to come together, so make a point to stop by the one near you. Communities matter at your library. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Hope you enjoyed our visit with West Virginia Bookmobiles. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today. <laughs>